David and Absalom. Now, David sinned. He really did a big sin because although he was married, he went off with another woman called Bathsheba and got her pregnant, having a baby, and then he arranged for her husband to be killed. Now, this is pretty awful. And so because of that, David suffered a lot of things in his life. God forgave him, but he had a lot of suffering in his family life as a result of that. And we're going to think about David and his son called Absalom. What did he do? Well, let's think about Absalom. It says that in all Israel there was nobody more handsome than Absalom. And he was the king's favourite son, David's favourite son. From the bottom of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. There was nothing wrong with him. Every year he cut his hair because it became too heavy for him. And his hair was weighed on the king's scales and it weighed 200 shekels. How much is that? Well, that's quite a few kilograms. How many kilograms? In the I don't know exactly how many, but that's quite a, quite a few kilograms. And it seems to me that that is a rather vain thing to do, to cut your hair and show it all off like that and weigh it. But anyway, David loved Absalom very dearly. But Absalom wanted to get rid of his daddy, David, and he wanted to be the king. He had chariots and horses and 50 men to serve him. He would get up early in the morning and he would wait at the gate near the court where David would give judgment. And if anyone came with a problem or a case to put before King David, Absalom would call him unto him and ask him where he came from. And Absalom would say, you're right, no matter whether the man was right or wrong. Absalom would tell him, you're right, but there's no one here to properly look after your case and make sure that you get justice. If I were judge, anyone could come to me and I would do him justice. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And the people there, they actually stole Absalom. That's right. The, the, the people were not very righteous. They weren't really trying to do the right thing before God. Everyone wanted to just get some money for themselves. Well, one day Absalom said to King David, I want to go to Hebron because I made a promise to God while I was living in Syria. And David said to him, go in peace. So Absalom went to Hebron, but he sent spies all over the various tribes of Israel saying, as soon as you hear the sound of a trumpet, then you must say, Absalom is king in Hebron. Now, Absalom took with him about 200 men from Jerusalem who didn't know anything about his plans. But more and more people turned to support Absalom. But a messenger came to David and warned him, and he said to all his servants, we must flee, we must run away, or otherwise Absalom is going to kill us. Now, how awful is that, that... Your own son is trying to kill you. Why did Absalom want to be the king? Well, the king is the biggest person in the country. Yes, but why does he want all the power for himself? Because God Well, said, that's right. God was the king of it's Israel. not the most powerful person that can... Well, can please God, but... Absalom, I, I suppose, just wanted, as men do today, and men and women, he just wanted all the power and the glory for himself. And he didn't care if that meant even killing his own father. That's not very nice, He was it? so in love with himself. That's right. That's why it says, love your neighbour as yourself. That's what Jesus said. But clearly Absalom didn't do that. So... He was planning to kill David, and so David and his men ran away. But the Ark of God and Zadok the priest remained in Jerusalem. So there was a war between David and his son Absalom. David divided his army into three parts, and he was going to go out with them. But his people said, you mustn't go out, because nobody cares about any of us. All that people want to do is to kill you. 
you're worth 10,000 of us, so you stay behind. And David said, I'll do whatever you think best. So he stood by the gate. And the people came out in their groups to go out and fight. And he told the commanders, Joab, Abishai, and Ittai, deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard what he told them about Absalom. A great battle was fought in the wood of Ephraim, and the people of Israel were defeated by the army of David, and 20,000 men were killed. And the Israel too, that happened every day. Well, every day something ev ev bad happened. Every day something bad happened for David at that time, because... The people were all supporting Absalom more and more. Well, Absalom met the servants of David. And Absalom was riding on a horse. And the horse went underneath a big oak tree. And Absalom, you remember he had very long hair that he was rather proud of. Absalom's head was caught up in the thick boughs of the oak so that he dangled between the sky and the ground. And his horse galloped away from beneath him so he was left hanging in the tree, swinging on the branch. And someone told Joab, saying, I've seen Absalom hanging in an oak. And Joab said, well, why didn't you go and strike him to the ground? I'd have given you ten shekels of silver. It's rather like hanging on a swing. That's how it would have in been. In a park, but it's much more... Scary, because more. you're caught by your hair. And it hurts more. That's I've right. got quite long hair, but I don't think I'll be riding on a horse under... An oak uh, tree. Yes. So, Joab says to this man who says, Oh, I saw Absalom hanging in, in an oak tree. He says, Why didn't you Why kill him? Didn't I would have given you ten shekels of silver. The man said, I would not have killed him for because a thousand shekels David of silver. David said. Because David said that we were not to kill his son. Oh, I can't bother waiting for you, said Joab. He took three darts in his hand and plunge them into the heart of Absalom, who was still alive and hanging from the oak. Ow. Then ten of Joab's young men stabbed Absalom to death. So David, Absalom's father, was sitting between the two gates of the city, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate by the wall and saw a man running toward the city. And he did have a sword, didn't he? He did. The watchman told the king, and the king said, If he's alone... He must be coming with news. Then the watchman saw another man. He said to the king, The first man runs very much like Ahimeaz, son of Zadok. The king said, He's a good man. He will be coming with good news. Ahimeaz called up to the king and said, All is well. He fell on his face before the king and said, Praised be God who delivered up the men who lifted up their hand against you. The king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimeaz said, Well, when Joab sent me... And the other messenger, everything was very confused, and I don't know what happened. The king said, go and stand over there. Then the other messenger, Cushai, arrived. News, my lord, the king. The lord has avenged you on those who rebelled against you. The king said to Cushai, is the young man Absalom safe? Cushai said, may the enemies of my lord, the king, and all that seek to harm you be as Absalom is now. In other words, he was dead. The king was greatly distressed, and he went up to his bedroom over the gate, weeping and saying, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for you, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. He must have been very, 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 very sad. Yes, he was, and it shows how much he loved him, because... Even though he... Absalom was trying to kill his to father. Kill and yet... Absol David so loved Absalom and so that just shows how God loves us so much he really really does and it also shows that when you sin like David did although God does forgive there's very often results or consequences in our lives and David's family life after this that sin with Bathsheba was very very sad and so Things that we might do in the heat of the moment that we might think, oh yeah, that sounds good, that feels good, I'm going to do that. These things can have consequences, can have results for the rest of our lives. 
It's like if a young man or woman gets on a motorbike and goes, yay, I can go as fast as I like. And it feels great. And then, bang, they've had an accident. They lose their legs. Or they even die. Yeah, well, I'm thinking if they lost their legs, that, that error of a moment, the result of that lasts all their lives. That's sweet. Oh, I didn't have tension. I hate this mode button. They sometimes break it off up and smash it. That's a good example. If a, if a little person has a tantrum and smashes something up, then it's smashed. It's broken. And it's no good saying, oh, why doesn't it work now? So the because point is, because you broke it when you're having a tantrum. So the point is that just doing what we feel is right at the moment can have effects that then last a long time. You, ooh, and they just... I don't know what they do, but they just wonder. Well, we all see the results of this sort of thing all the time. Yeah. And so what happened in David's family was very, very sad. And it's all a, a lesson for us. And the great thing is that poor David, after all these terrible things, sad things that happened in his life, some his fault, some not his fault, he will be in the kingdom. And it was through all oh. these experiences that he developed to be the man that God really wanted him to be.